And, um, you know, a couple of generations later, they're still persecuting Galileo for supporting it. So mm. these things, yeah, things go quicker now. Yeah. But it still takes some time. I see a big difference now uh, than I do in the 1990s for even the redating of the Sphinx. Do you think it's because of the Internet? Uh, I think it's not necessarily. Yes, the Internet helps. I have mixed feelings about the Internet because the problem with the Internet is you can disseminate information. You get information out, but it doesn't mean it's good information. Right. So you get the naysayers, the critics, the skeptics, they have access to it too. Fake news. Uh, fake news and genuine yeah. fake news yes. versus real fake news. Right. And it seems that so many <laughs> times they're flipped. Yeah, even, yeah they? it's, it's they're very, very much confusing. Flipped. So it's very confusing. So one of the problems I see with all this information and misinformation and all these factoids out there is it's very confusing for many people if they're not involved in something. And again, I'm not trying to claim you have to go to experts and authorities because that's part of the problem too when you have right. the pseudo-authorities who just are pushing their own agendas and frankly don't know what they're talking about. And I see too many of that among, we'll say, certain academics and skeptics, that mm -hmm. type of thing. Uh, but it's also confusing when you only take information and you don't know how to put it all together. So I teach... You know, I teach in a university. I teach college at Boston University. And what I find with students, and I'm not picking on them. I'm saying this with all due respect. They have so much access to facts and factoids. We'll use that term. But they have to understand the bigger picture. They have to be able to understand critically and think critically about it to put things together. Um, and how does it all fit together? And that that's so important, and that's not something I think you get just from, you know, surfing the internet, uh, right? Of course, uh, quickly. No, or this watching is... a couple of YouTube videos by someone that's not necessarily reliable. That's a problem, right? It, how much misinformation has been spread through YouTube? More more than good information, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I mean, we could put on some fake lab coats right now and just make some nonsense video. Oh, and yeah, get exactly. Views oh, exactly, by the end of the exactly, exactly. And see, I've had the problem, too, in my business. You know, what I'm talking about is that they say you can't please everyone all the time. But it seems like in some cases, in my career in this field, I've been able to displease everyone <laughs> because I'll come out with positions sometimes. Sorry, I'm losing my headset. I'll come out with positions sometimes where I'm not pleasing my academic colleagues, but I'm not extreme enough for the, should we say, other side. Right. You know, so it's I'm like caught in the middle because I'm going by the evidence I actually have. And it's not jiving with so to speak. The tinfoil hat brigade. Yeah. So what, yeah, how is yeah. that received by the people that, I mean, there are those ancient aliens type folks that really oh, want yeah. everything they to be. They want everything to be ancient aliens. And right. I've been accused of how could I not accept this or that, you know. Me too. Be, because people get mad at, about yeah, those Yeah, they get really mad at me. And they're they the say, nastiest. Yeah, they're the nastiest. And they'll even tell me, well, this supports what everything you've been saying. I don't care if it supports everything I've been saying. If it's not real, it's not real. If the yeah. evidence isn't there, it's not, you know. It is fascinating that they do dig up these ancient structures and the Machu Picchu and all yeah. these different places where, like, wow, these construction methods are really pretty impressive. Incredible. What, what was going on back then, but they always want to tie it to aliens. They always want to tie it to aliens, which I think is a— I hate to use this term, but sort of a cop out. Yeah. I mean, well, it's it, a business. It, it's a business. Well, that's what it gets down to. Yes. A lot of this is business. People want to sell their books. They want to mm -hmm. sell their conferences. They want to sell their DVDs. Right. They want to um, sell their YouTube videos. And in some cases, they want to sell for money. In some cases, they want to sell for promotion, yes. self promotion. They want to be famous. I told you, I, I was accused of that back. You yeah, know, in the early nineties. Oh, I just doing this because I want to be famous. No, I'm I'm not that type of person. Actually, well, people love those shows, those UFO and ancient alien yeah. type shows, and they love those conferences. They go to those conferences yeah. and they all just yeah, mentally masturbate do. together. It's very bizarre. <laughs> it's like, they're, but they're all like, yeah. There's nothing but, you know, to support but I think it, what they're but saying. I, but I think it does fill a void for some people. And yes. one thing I'm trying to do is to 
fill that void with something real, right. something important, something that has evidence to back it up, because there are a lot of questions. There are a lot of mysteries, and I will admit I've been on the Ancient Aliens show, but I've never proposed ancient aliens. I've never supported that. I've always been clear if people actually listen to me, but they ask me to be on it, and a number of other academics have too. Do they use you out of context? A little bit? Well, yeah, the context is not necessarily... Slippery. Yeah, slippery. But the point is that there are real mysteries to this yes. day, things that we don't really understand that you and I have been discussing about, and there's so many more we could discuss, but those are real. And so many people that I know that watch shows like that, when I talk to them, and I'm talking academics who would never admit that they watch it, they watch it because they find it entertaining, number one. They don't quite say it this way, but I think it fills a void. Yeah. And it does raise issues that if they're perceptive, then they might become aware of and realize that these are real issues. No ancient aliens or some other easy answer is not the way to go, but they are real things that need to be looked into. So even when I speak at a conference like that, there are so many very intelligent people that are there besides the other, but you know, there are different types of people. Sure. But I know many people, they'll have PhDs and stuff and they'll go to it for sort of a between entertainment, but also to get exposed to things they're not going to be exposed to by the standard academic community. Right. You're not going to get exposed to a lot of this, these types of questions if you just go to the standard closed academic conferences. It's They're going to be 